Hello and welcome to Roadrunner Predictions. Today we're going to be touching base in some college basketball. We kind of had a limited games last uh, yesterday, but today, man, there's a lot to filter on. And I think today is going to be overall more of a cautious day whenever it seems like you get the easy pick off Baylor, which I thought was a complete trap because it seems so far the one way. I'm like, what? Like, how do you not take Baylor? But no, it was a, it was a gimme. It's one of those days and Maybe Vegas wants to get it back, but there's so many good games today. Uh, some late conference matchups, and overall some great teams playing. Let's go ahead and get into it. We all know that. I don't need to go brush up in it. Uh, first matchup, let's go Butler versus Seton Hall. Big East gameplay over under at 134, and right now it's at 135. People are obviously going to be jumping on the over. We are actually, that's not going to be our pick as we're taking the under at 135. Uh, in the previous matchup, these two teams went uh, 78 to uh, 70, which is a total of uh, 148. Guys, Seton Hall has been playing phenomenal basketball, impressing everyone overall. If you really think about it, leading the Big East right now, uh, fall right behind my boys in the blue, Creighton. And it's really odd how two mid pack teams from last year and years prior are doing fairly well and are on top. And... That's what you get when you have Villanova slip, and it makes you ask the question, is the Big East really as strong as we might think, or is it just kind of off or not? And uh, I, we have to wait till postseason for that, and I can't wait. Uh, maybe the Big Ten's up on the roar. I don't know. It's it's too hard to say. I think Big East is a little bit better than Big Ten, but we won't know till the till the, uh, clash with Sword and Shield. But... Uh, Butler's actually getting a lot of love here at plus 5 at 59%. The consensus to the 41 favorite of consensus of Seton Hall. And if you really think about the last 10, uh, Seton Hall is 7-3 and 5-5 and and five and five against the spread. And at home, they're still winning games. But overall against the spread, 16-9. and nine, And that is because people are like, no, this team really isn't that good. And when you say that, and they really are, you kind of meet up with this mesh. And Seton Hall's losing more and more games recently. Uh, the last uh, three of the last five. or uh, Yeah, last three of the last five. And um, uh, Butler's been playing pretty stout, but they're about covered about equal. The reason why I like the under this play is between, especially when it was 148 big scoring game last, they both shot higher than normal on the last previous matchup. Now... I think it's going to even out a little bit. So let's, we're going to pull that down. And you're getting late in the contention in the Big East gameplay. And this is a more of a must win for Seton Hall. Uh, look for that defense to come in. So I like late season, two equal or equivalent teams in stats and scores. I like the the unders because they're going to play each other real tight. Uh, let's just go right into the next game I'm really excited about. Michigan versus Rutgers. It's really weird to me that Rutgers are getting this much love, uh, minus two and a half with 60% of the consensus. I was really surprised, especially when they're uh, 15 and 8 against the spread. So I think people are just now jumping on the red wagon, um, the Rutgers, and I'm not buying it. They have never beat Michigan, and I know that's something to say, well, now is the time to take Rutgers. Guys, I just like uh, the Maize and Puke if you're a Michigan State fan. Uh, we're going to take the Maize and Blue. At plus two and a half, because how could you not? And I th actually, I think it went to uh, plus one and a half, so you're not even going to get that line anymore. But it is two and a half on this, so I'm taking it. Um, I got Michigan uh, pulling out the win on that one. Uh, yes, the win. I think they're going to uh, do it pretty uh, confidently. Uh, they last time they played, it was uh, 69 to 63. Michigan pulled the win off. And they shot 46% field goal percentage. That's actually what they do. So they actually played on even with that. They did shoot, however, better at threes by almost 12% more. Well, not almost, but 12% better on three to where uh, Rutgers played uh, five below their percentages because they average 30 and they shot at 25, and they shot really bad in the field at 32. Normally, I'd like the, the uh, when a team does that, I'd like to records, but I, I'm just not going to take it in this case because um, Michigan, I feel like, is starting to get back on suit from their little um, midseason slump. They came off, or they, they were able to win games, and I think they're starting to tighten up the gameplay, and I look them to take it uh, to to the horn with the win. Um, now let's go into a, what other game did I have here? Uh, Syracuse and uh, Louisville. 
Another game, I really like Louisville, minus 9. And I'm not just saying it because they, they are 60-40 in the consensus. They own 40% of the poll for consensus. I like it because uh, this this Louisville team, when they're on, they're on fire. I just think they're just going to beat the brakes off of Syracuse Orange, and that's why I like them. I know 9 points is hard. You're getting 9 on the road with Syracuse. It's so hard to go against that, but... Um, I have more points on here while I like uh, um, Syracuse uh, played Florida State. And uh, oh, where did I put? they just lost on the and uh, just lost on the road. And then they played uh, North Carolina State, losing close games. So Louisville actually is coming off a two-game road. And now they're finally getting an S at home. They've had four days of rest. I just think they're ready to play some basketball and come off this horrible loss. Uh, to this Clemson team they just did, and I think they're going to show for it. The reason why there's an edge here is because Louisville shot so poorly. They had their worst game against Georgia State, I mean uh, Georgia Tech, and now they're coming. All they have to do is play normal, and they'll cover this by 12 points. So I think Louisville comes out even hyped. I don't know the guys. I think in 12 points to 15 points here in Louisville. I know that sounds so crazy, but that's what I got, and I'm sticking to it and using the an analysis and uh, the gameplay of Louisville. So I like Louisville minus nine, and that's actually probably my favorite play today. So uh, let's go to my last game. I have Duke versus North Carolina State. I know it's way down here. Let me pull this up. I just like giving the image imagery of it. This is the premier game of the night. Uh, North Carolina State, now you're thinking like, okay, they're at home, they're getting six and a half. It actually went down to six. I still like it at six. Uh, five or four, no, not so much. So if you missed it, five and a half, no, I'd take that at least to six. I think Duke wins by three. But North, don't I would not be shocked one bit if North Carolina State wins this game. Three years ago, they beat a top five Duke team. Uh, last year, I know they kind of got beat, but not beat by too bad. I'm just saying that this uh, they know how Duke plays, and they're going to play accordingly, and they have the home advantage. Let's be honest, guys. Even if you're not as popular as some of the other schools like North Carolina State compared to Duke in basketball, or even football, really, okay, you're not. But when Duke is coming to town, you're putting up the banners, you're busting out the beers, and you're going to that game. I look for North Carolina State to be crazy, and I have them as my pick. I think this is going to be a fun pick. I have them at six and a half. I think it's a two and a half leverage, so I'll take it. I'm sorry, uh, six and a half. I think it's a close one. I, I just like to give the nighttime game. It's not much of an edge, but I think the edge is there on North Carolina State by literally half a point. But um, I know they lost to Boston College 71 to 68, so they played teams to where they can hang. Uh, three, last three games were on the road. Now they're at home, and they got a couple days to nestle in and get ready to play this game. Duke has just been on fire, and I just like the trends to set, but they've, they've been at home the last few games, uh, whooping on um, Notre Dame, 94 to 60. I was like, what? Like, where's that? Notre Dame plays pretty defensively, and I thought, I thought they'd at least put up a fight. I mean, I... I didn't even really pick them to cover. I really didn't go over the analysts in that game on this channel, but I looked at some of the numbers. I'm like, well, and Duke really beat them impressively, but now they have to go back on the road. So I'm having North Carolina State for my late game pick. Uh, thanks for tuning in with the Roadrunner. I got them at 6.5. Uh, happy betting, guys, and good luck.